I am unashamed. What about you? So today we are welcoming into the lair for the first time, Mr. Ryan Lee. Welcome, uh, Ryan. Thank you, thank you. It's a, good to be in the lair. A good, uh, a good buddy, a good friend of ours, mm. and uh, also works uh, for One Kingdom, which is uh, we're going to talk about a little bit later. A great ministry that uh, that we've all been a part of for our, I guess, our whole lives, pretty much, yeah, or since yeah. we've you know been adults. But also, Ryan is a worship leader, mm-hmm. and. Yes. Uh, so I was excited about having him on because Jace Ryan is is talks about worship a oh, yeah. lot on our oh, yeah. podcast. So he's, he's well, like, yeah, we've synced up on that for sure. <laughs> That's how Ryan yeah. and I got to be really good friends because yeah. we were part of a team for a couple of years. To which I what's funny about it because I I tell Missy when I grow up I'm gonna be able to sing like Ryan Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I don't know, you need to have higher goals than that. <laughs> yes, yeah. no, I Jason like setting the bar low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like though the fact that what comes across is your, you know, heart for God in in worship, and you just tag along. Ryan was at our house, and that and Phil actually came, which was surprising. <laughs> we had a surprise <laughs> birthday party for the for the prime rib, though. I mean, there was let's well, make sure you know we what? knew why he was he there. He has on record as saying the food yeah. is the draw. Right. So. Yeah. I actually think that's why he came, but that's yeah. okay. Yeah. You, you yeah. are correct. <laughs> <laughs> I said, wait a minute, bone in, ribeye. Yeah, yeah. We're that's having a birthday party. We're having a cake. Party. Feels like so we're going to worship together. Worship we're, together. And we're having prime rib. Yeah. Feels like I think I'll be there. <laughs> Last night we had blackened. No, we didn't. It was mustard fried crappie. Mm. So, was that come from Stone? Was that one of his offerings? So, so you know, we train them right, Dad. When the next generation for, under me now still brings the first fruits to the patriarch, right? And we had yeah. uh, we had some little rolls, had some little rolls, and the little rolls we had a little. Fresh made mayhaw jelly ah. nestled in between there, so it was. So it was it's mayhaw season. We it was crappy yeah. and mayhaw jelly. Yeah. So not being from Louisiana, mayhaw jelly has been one of the the highlights of being here. And I mean the, the mayhaw trees and all that stuff. That's also slow. What's the slow? Is there a slow, 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 yeah. slow. Spelled S L O E. Yeah. And you have to say it slow. slow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I told the story about. Our, our Nicaraguan daughter, Karina, every time I would, when I introduced it, I would mm. say the slow jelly. So when she went back to college in Minnesota, <laughs> she was telling all her American friends about the slow jelly. And she kept telling me <laughs> the story. Sure <laughs> and I said, were you doing that every time? She went, doing what? Like slow. And she's like, Yes, that's how you say it. Huh? I said, no, that's me. I, I, I. She yeah. said, well, I was wondering why they were snickering. I was like. Just a lot yeah. of O's in it. Yeah, it's slow. She just thought, oh, that's just. The just, original <laughs> idea was they call it slows because it's the latest plum that you see anywhere. In other words, all the plums come and go in June, going yeah. into July, gone. But these all the way to October. Yeah, and they they are so late. The, they're a late uh, and the and the, I'm thinking that the spelling is because this came from Scotland and England, and over there they don't I don't know if they make jelly out of it, but they make gin out of it. Slow yeah. gin is very famous yep. in Europe, mm-hmm. yep. so it's that same. But it went made its way over, I guess, with some of the early folks from they there. Brought it with them, and then it wound up being for here, you know. So, but, but to go back to Ryan and I, I think it was our first meeting, and uh, it was Trent. And I, we had our wives there and, yeah. and I was, cause it, it's a tough situation for them and everybody who, who does church work, you know, you're kind of working within an organization and you're wanting to, you know, celebrate on Sunday mornings, you know, Jesus is Lord and he's alive. And, but you have some of the more mature members who get uncomfortable when you change anything. Right. And so Missy and I were bringing some, some new ideas through creativity. And I remember Ryan saying, I mean, now how far are you you wanting to go? But he asked me, like, I was trying to think of a way to describe it, and I said something that I shouldn't have, but it he got my point. I said, 
as in burn the building. <laughs> and I remember looking at the look on his face because I was making the point that we're the church. We're we're the right. body of right. Christ. We're gonna celebrate. So I anything that's that's a problem within this building, I, I want to tear that yeah, down. down. Right. And so Ryan's like, I'm in. Yeah. So and it but it was a great it was a great venture and we mm-hmm. we formed a bond and I really appreciate you you leading that night for Missy's birthday. I mean she cried. I, I was shocked. She yeah, she just, was. Yeah, she missed everybody because we're going back from right. here to Austin and there's just something about getting out under the stars with people you have a relationship with and celebrating who God is and it wasn't even a Sunday morning. I think it was a Friday night. Yeah, it was a Friday it, night. It was awesome. Yeah. Um, so Ryan, one of the things I've always wondered about is if. When do you, when, like, were you, have you always loved worship, you know, playing music? I mean, when did that, like, because I always wonder with worship, is this your, your whole life? Is it some right. point, like everybody else, you had like this awareness, or when, when yeah. did it kind of, so, when did you realize you had, that you loved it and you, right. this is something you wanted to do? My story is, you know, a little bit unique because I grew up in an acapella church, right? As we all did. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I wasn't, I was, we weren't really taught, you know, uh, that instrumental music was bad. It was just that we were always a cappella traditional. So I never thought of worship as, you know, right. instrumental. And then, uh, I, you know, I listened to, I'm a kid of the 80s and, and our 90s. Okay. So I'm listening to Nirvana and Pearl Jam and I'm listening to my alternative rock radio right. station. And then all of a sudden, Jars of Clay comes on. I was like, wait a minute, what is this? This, you know, this is my style of music, but it's pointed yeah. at Jesus. Right. And uh, and then not long after that, or maybe right before, I, I can't remember the, who came out with what, but DC Talk, you remember? Jesus Freak yep, came yeah. out. Yep. And now all of a sudden, I'm like, wait a minute, we can do this? <laughs> you know, I just the, the thought had never occurred yeah. to me. Right. It wasn't that it was wrong. It was just that it it never even occurred to me that we could worship in that, that way. Yeah. And uh, really, you know, I was in a band in college and did that whole deal, but it was really about 10 years ago that um, I started listening to worship music. And uh, I went on a men's retreat and uh, they had a, they had a worship team, they had a praise band there. And, and I just, my heart was just pricked that I could just be free in my worship yeah. and, and just to not worry about what this guy on my right is doing, what this guy on my left is doing, but just be free with an intimate one-on-one moment with Jesus. Yeah. And th- that's when it turned for me. And then like, I couldn't tell you what a whole lot of relevant music is going on today. I, I just don't listen to it because right. all I listen to is worship. Yeah. And, um, that has really transformed my life because now, you know, I'm in the truck and the, I got two boys and they're in the back of the truck singing worship songs and requesting specific songs. And right. yeah. so that really, that, that moment, I think, you know, understanding that, that there's freedom in our worship, that there's not a specific way that you're supposed to do it. Right. Really, really. Changing. And that it's not just reserved. We talk a lot about this on this podcast for Sundays. Yeah. I mean that like what you're describing is really a whole lifestyle of right. worship that it's all the time. Yeah. And that it goes to the next generation. That's right. Well, yeah, I, I have a habit now. Every time I pull up in a parking lot where mischievous events are happening, like a golf tournament or everything, I mean, you just, you know, it has a certain smell to it. Yeah. It's kind of like pre vomit. You know, <laughs> well, vomit. it's like Bourbon yeah, Street. Yeah. You know, when you, as soon as you. That's post vomit. Yeah, that's post. Yeah, yeah. Bourbon Street's post for sure. But this, this is pre. pre. You, you smell all the right, right ingredients right, right. and you're fast forward in your mind four or five hours and you're like, yeah. So I always turn that worship music yeah. wide open while mm. I'm getting my stuff out because people are looking around. But I'm, I'm like, and I mean, I always have my Bible in my truck, but I'm just setting the tone. And I, I need that for what I'm fixing to encounter. And uh, so, I mean, Al, you're right. And what you were saying about free to worship, you know, the two places in the New Testament that talk about, I guess, how we worship, because the whole point is who. Yeah. 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 The how, it, 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 it gives lists. So I, when I view that just as an average intelligence person, I'm like seeing spiritual songs and hymns and what's the other one? Uh, what does it say? Hymns, it spiritual songs. I'm having a brain cramp. But I'm like that. that To one another. Right? Yeah, but he, he lists categories, which there's a lot of things that are involved that yeah. with that. You know, when you see Psalms, 
the definition is with a stringed instrument. Mm -hmm. My Bible's falling apart I, even I'm more. I'm noticing that, yeah. Yeah, I, well, and I have a new one, <laughs> it's embarrassing, but actually. I've lost it. I don't have Ephesians 5. Instead of, literally instead of highlights, out of Bible. Jace has coffee stains. <laughs> <laughs> Ephesians 5 is no longer in my Bible. So I was thinking, are you talking about this one? Colossians 3 says, let the word of Christ, yeah. uh, 16, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom and as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs yeah. mm -hmm. with gratitude in your hearts to God. Okay, okay, I found Ephesians 5. Speak to one another. It says the same thing. With psalms, which is singing with a stringed instrument. Right, right. Hymns. Yep. We got that down. Mm -hmm. And spiritual songs. Mm -hmm. Well, there's, that's a lot of different categories that are a lot of different ways to express yourself is, is the way I always yeah. read it. You know what strikes me is when John the Revelator <clears throat> is, is telling the story of what he was seeing when the Roman Empire decided they were going to crush the people of God, in the middle of all of it, he said, I saw heaven open. Uh, and another great and marvelous sign, seven angels with the seven plagues last because with them God's wrath is completed. So he devastates the Roman Empire on our behalf. We won at the end of the day. I saw what looked like a sea of glass mixed with fire standing beside the sea. He's got a picture in heaven. Those who had been victorious over the beast, the saints, and his image and over the number of his name. They held harps given them by God, so God furnished a harp for all these people, and they sang the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb. Then it has the song right there. But you say, if God uh, outfitted them with some harps... <laughs> I'm saying well, I would love to I'm see just saying, you play a harp on a harp. Yeah. I'm yeah. saying take yeah. note of that, whatever that means. <laughs> By the way, that's the proper harp technique yeah. that he's he's showing right here. I was impressed. Right I was yeah. impressed. Ryan, the next now, time you form a praise team, we need yeah, yeah. Phil over on the side with Amen. a harp. Oh yeah, <laughs> or or saying, a cowbell, more cowbell. I'm right. just saying the they held harps given them by God. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, what is the hullabaloo about all this? I mean, you know. I mean, loosen up a little bit here. If it's a picture and they're in heaven and You're God right. has it's furnished the, the, the harps, right. I'm not... That, Which that's that, where we get... It doesn't bother him. That's that, what I'm that's trying to say. That's where the uh, illustration came through through the middle centuries of the little baby looking angel yeah, yeah, with, the with the harp. Yeah, you know, yeah. that kind of, comes yeah, that, that, that tiny harp. But the image, point tiny was tiny. they were all singing worthy is the lamb. That's right. I mean, the, we get, God was we, being praised. We yeah. get so sidetracked on how we're going to do something and that's what I was making the point about. Mm -hmm. Actually, organized. condemn people and get angry with others. Yeah. I'm like, just make sure that you're worshiping the Lord. Yeah. yeah. And we'll we'll give you some slack on how exactly you want to do that. Right. I well, mean, if we, you notice that in, in every the verses that you just quoted in Ephesians, Colossians, every verse about worship talks about a grateful heart. Yeah. You know, yep. it's a response. If, if you're not grateful then you're really not doing it right. You're talking about wanting to do it right? Yeah. Start with a grateful heart. Yeah, that's right. Uh, then you have Genesis uh, chapter 4. Uh -oh. When God made <laughs> mankind, he had somebody named Zillith, but he and he and here comes old Jubal. Jubal. Yeah. Jubal. I was wondering yeah. how long. Yeah. Look, we had a, Jubal a was, the, was the father of who the all under. who play yeah. the harp and the flute. What was I'm the like, over under on Jubal? Ten minutes. I lost. Yeah. So catch I, this. I, I he made individuals who were Jubal Jubilee. You say he made people that were very good. Yeah. Ryan, that's, but that's he, Ryan's ancestors. And then we got the <laughs> folks who are saying, but he never wanted to hear it while we were on planet Earth. I'm like, well, he made them, <laughs> and he and they. Some people just have a knack for musical instruments. You say, I wonder where they got that. So, yeah, this is a good point. Let's, let's descendants take, of old Jubal. Let's take a quick break. So Ryan, every every time somebody's on here that's musical, we always go we to get Genesis this. for Jubal. <laughs> son of Jubal. I just Ow, always son throw a couple in, saying, "I don't know, boys. What about this one? I mean, you know, I calm guess that's down. where they it's get the point, word man. jubilee. Yeah, probably that's so. the root. I added that. Jubilation. I, I, I would think jubilations and jubilee. Feels right, yeah. But you know, I mean, the, one of my favorite chapters in the Bible is Luke fifteen, and people go there talk about the prodigal son and the 
lost sheep if you lose 99 and you know why is jesus eating with tax collectors and sinners that was the accusation but really it's about joy on earth mm -hmm. and in heaven yep. about god establishing the relationship back with people the bridge which is jesus i mean he's like not only is there rejoicing when something lost is found there's rejoicing in heaven and he, he says it over and over and over so you get a picture of we're not just you know celebrating here and, and what would seem crazy is if they're celebrating in heaven over someone coming to god and there's no celebration here right. what that doesn't make sense he was drinking wine with some people in a place <laughs> And when the Pharisees saw him, they said, look at that. He's a drunkard. Yeah. They, they went from he's having a glass of wine to a drunkard. Yeah. And Jesus chastised them. He said, you know, you say John the Baptist has a demon, which is a lie. And he said, and you call me a drunk and a wine bibber or whatever. He said, a glutton. Wiz, he wiz, said a glutton. A glutton, a glutton, a glutton and a wine bibber. But he said, <laughs> wisdom will be proved right by its actions. Mm -hmm. Then he just yeah. went right on. So that's what I'm saying. They look at something, they just overreact. I mean, yeah. good night, he's got a glass of wine. Well, and that's that's been one of the sad things to me, travel around the American church. I figured out no matter what group you're with, uh, I talk to pastors and leaders, and it's always, they call them worship wars, and it's always over the style and the how yeah. in these in these places. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so just as we've said today, that's so sad to me because if you were, Arguing over the how, you totally miss the who. Right. That's I right. mean, there's no way you can be coming in there with that. Right before we went on air, you were talking about vulnerability mm -hmm. in leading worship. Yeah. And which I think is the same even in participating, right? Think yeah. about it, Al. 98% of our worship is from Monday through Saturday. Yeah. A small Because that's most of the time yeah, of our life. A small life. percentage yeah. is with the brothers themselves, right. but the structure became more important than the worship. So you. You're looking on how you're going to go about worship, and you're mm -hmm. like, y'all need to loosen up a little bit. <laughs> so, yeah. so so, Dad gave us uh, one from Revelation. I, I wanted you guys to chime in, too, on some, maybe uh, some place in Scripture that you love about worship. Mm -hmm. For me, it's always been, because I'm just, I marvel at it, was in Job 1. After Job got the bad news of he lost his children, he yeah. lost his wealth, he lost everything in one fell swoop. And look, it was just message, message, message. So it was like a triple whammy. And so at, at this, the last one in verse 20, Job got up, tore his robe, which was an ancient way of saying, I'm in misery, mm -hmm. shaved his head, which meant I'm worth nothing. Then he fell to the ground in worship and said, and then here was his worship, naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. And I just thought, you know, we think about times when you worship. Yeah. In this case, it was the worst crushing thing that we couldn't even imagine. And Job's response was to worship God, which, I, I mean, that's the standard for me. I'm, yeah. I'm just like, no matter what you're your body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, don't conform in it, which is your spiritual act of worship. Mm -hmm. And, uh, don't 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 get with the world. But get, get stay away from them. You don't don't do worldly things. You know. Right. You know. Don't let them z z get you in there. Take right. you in there. But it's a it's a full time thing, twenty four seven. Yeah. That's where you got to start. For me, you know, Phil just quoted it, Romans twelve one. Yeah. You know, your your true and proper worship is your living sacrifice. <laughs> That's it. You know, where where I think we get caught up with the word worship is is only songs. Yeah. Well, your worship is the way you live. That's it's, it. It's in your work. It's in your relationships. It's everything you do. It's it's not just this, you know, one hour on a Sunday morning. It's how you live. So then when we get together and sing songs, it's just a celebration. Right. Yep. Yep. You know, and 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 you can use, uh, you know, a lot of these songs nowadays are, they're, they're talking about worship as a weapon. You, you, you think about Second Chronicles with Jehoshaphat, you know, they, they go and sing over the uh, victory over Ammon and, and Moab. And then, and then uh, Joshua, of course, you know, with the walls of Jericho, there's they're playing trumpets. You know, even I, David, oh, Mir Miriam after the Red Sea. Miriam, right. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. yeah. Well, I love David. You know, he's he's in a cave hiding for his life. You know. Yeah. He, he, he they're, they're after him, and what does he do? He writes a song. Yeah. You know, and sings praises to God and says, you know, no matter what happens here, I'm going to praise you. And the evil yeah. one uses yeah. music too. There's there's some brands of music that 
especially young people, need to stay away from. It's, that's it's, a great point. It, it's yeah. uh, musical filth. So you say it always cuts the same way. We're pointing people to Jesus. Well, there's other musicians out yeah. there that are pointing people to the evil one. So hey. well, and mm. it's a reflection of their heart. It's you like recognize them by their fruit. Well, <clears throat> some of these uh, like rap songs and all, people are angry, yeah. and they're yep. they're you, they feel guilty, and they you know things bad things have happened, and you're just seeing a reflection of their heart, yep. which is you know when you look at the other side of it. Plus, so many of the lyrics are degrading to people, to women. Yeah. To it's just it's a terrible, yeah, uh, cultural thing as well. And, and I mean, when you hear it, sometimes it, we were at the beach a few weeks ago, and this kid walks by, and he's got, you know, a little bit skinny little dude, white dude, but he's listening to these rap lyrics. But I mean, it was just filthy. And he's walking, snaking his way down through all these people at the beach, and everybody's just looking around. You know, most people got yeah. their little rock music or little yeah. you know classics on, and and it was loud, and everybody's just looking at this kid like, "What do you do?" I mean, he's doing the same thing I'm doing. He's making a statement. He is. Yeah, that's exactly that's right. right. You know, I used to listen to some of that when I was younger. You know, just thinking I, we, we would justify it and say, "Oh, we just we just like the beat." Yeah. You know, we're not. I'm, <laughs> I'm not listening to the lyrics. You know. Yeah. But what's funny is now with these all these music services, you can listen to whatever you want, and CDs are thing of the past now. And so every now and then I'll go back and I'll listen to something. You know, this is what I was listening to when I was 16. And I can't even get through the first yeah, 30 yeah. seconds of the song. And I think that's, you know, part of, part of the sanctification process. You know, you, th that would really cut you if you were really listening to it. If you were really living holy, mm. some of these lyrics would really, really make you cringe. Do you remember yep. those? Uh, do you remember, are you too young for those the sh old shows? They used to, the way they used to roll out music, they would have these shows, usually on Friday night or Saturday, American Bandstand. Right, there were three right. or four of them, Soul Train. So right. it was their way to get new music out because mm -hmm. you didn't have all the avenues today. It was funny. They'd have all these kids out there, and they're dancing. They're playing the new music. And then they would interview a couple of them. You know, it's like, what do you like about this song? Well, it's got a good beat. Yeah. It was always that yeah, to yeah, start yeah, with. Yeah. It was like, well, it has a good beat. I just, I would have, and that was about it. You right. know, yeah. No substance like, to No it, substance yeah. at all. Yeah. But I just remember back thinking culturally, that's how it started. And it was it was not nearly as bad as it is today, but right. it's just kind of progressively gotten worse. You know, I always liked that old country style music that was in that old brother where out there, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. some of the songs that came out of that, I said, you know, our family uh, yeah. sang one of those songs. Oh, is that right? Mar yeah. Marv's wife it was in a group that sang one of those songs that's on that Oh, that's right. There. I remember it. Yeah. One of our cousins. One of our cousins. She uh, sang at that's uh, right. Jan's funeral. That's exactly right. She yeah. did. She, oh, some she of that sang music, I'll Fly Away. She did. Yep. Yeah, yeah. It was beautiful. <laughs> some yeah. of that music really was good. And when, a lot of it was spiritual. I mean, it was uh, hymns. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah. A big big chunk of it was. You know, yeah. you brought up Jan's funeral. I mean, that, what I, you know, your emotions are raw. Mm -hmm. But we sang that. I remember just thinking, "This is what heaven is like." I mean, that was it. Was it just seemed supernatural? You know, it's a worship. good point. And that's what when I'm at a funeral like that, and there's worship that happens, and I've been to many, and it's usually because of the person we're celebrating, right. who they were in Christ. But it's really a lot like this Job passage, you yeah. know, because you think about it, it, doesn't make a lot of sense that we're like celebrating and worship and right. touched and moved. But people live lives that, that affect us that Plus, way. Plus, I don't yeah. think our mindset needs to be, let's get rid of, we were in a kind of a rut saying this is the only way. But on, uh, I think everyone needs to remember, you know, a cappella, when done with some great voices, is a powerful thing. That's right. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm saying, I'm one who's saying you shouldn't get rid of a cappella music. You should have that. I, I think, I said, because there are times when it fits the, it fits the situation. Well, when you brought that up, my favorite passage. Hang on, Jason. Let's take a break. So, Ryan, you've had many jobs, as we've seen. Did, did you ever sell insurance? Was ins insurance? You know, well, I sold insurance at Merrill. That, you know, we did some life insurance. Oh, okay. And there. My That's dad is actually an insurance agent. Oh, okay, good. Well, well, then you'll appreciate this. Yeah. Uh, one of our sponsors is a company called Gabby, G-A-B-I. And what they've done is they've taken full advantage of the internet to be able to quickly search for companies who offer the best rate. So if you're looking for a home insurance or car insurance, instead of you having to go out and find out all the rates and who's the cheapest and all this, Gabby basically does it for you and then says, here's the one that has the best deal. And it was pretty amazing because Lisa and I just used these guys and we had had a company 
you know, that we had a quote, but I don't know. I, I'm the kind of guy that's, oh, just, that's what it costs, so pay it. So she looks it up on Gabby. Well, they were like fourth. Yeah. I mean, there was, you know, and these are all well-known companies, you know, that, that people recognize. So if you want to save a little money, check out these guys. They average $961 a year in savings. And they never sell your info, so you don't have any of these robocalls and all that stuff that come from it. So uh, put your policy to the test. I did it. It worked. I saved some money. Go to Gabby, G-A-B-I dot com slash unashamed. That's G-A-B-I dot com slash unashamed and save a little money. My favorite passage is Mark fourteen twenty six. It's an obscure, subtle passage, but right before he goes to start the process to the cross. You know, Peter denying him all the trials, and he just said, him I'm there. fixed to pour out my blood for you. Yeah. It says in 1426, when they had sung a hymn, <clears throat> they went out to the Mount of Olives. <clears throat> and I thought about them singing that song. These were probably and, all males, would you think? Just the, or you think some of the know, women, some of the women with probably them? you know I think there was a little cadre of them. Yeah. That one of the things on the chosen is they kind of have a little. That's a good group, point. Right? Yeah. Good point. But I tell you this, and I here's the point I want to make. Probably some of them because they're humans and and they you know I've had this same problem. They probably sang the song, but they don't know what's fixed to happen. Yeah. But I guarantee you, the next time they sing this song. Mm-hmm. Wherever they were, after all this happens, Jesus dies and buried and resurrected. Pro- I, I will guarantee you, <laughs> there was an emotional response. Mm-hmm. There was a celebration response. Yep. There were tears flowing, and and that's kind of, I think, how we do. We get into a routine, and we're not looking at the big picture and not, you know, coupling our problems with his solution. And then all of a sudden, something happens, like at Jan's funeral, and you start reflecting and, and thinking of who God is and what he's done in your life, and all of a sudden, it just pours, it yeah. pours out. There's a it. lot of singing going on for the 5,000, by my count, the 5,000 years when they were saying the prophets, <clears throat> Jesus is coming. There was a lot of singing going on throughout the Bible. There was a lot of singing going on, period. So yeah, we, there's a place for it. Yeah, it starts with the Israelites. You know, they, they in Exodus, they're, they're free. They, the, the first worship song recorded in the Bible is there in Exodus as they're marching out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. And they sing a song of praise of freedom. It's a freedom song. Yep. And, and I think that's, that goes back to that grateful heart. It, if, you're thinking, if you're singing about the things that God has done in your life, then shouldn't there be an emotion? Shouldn't yeah. there be a passion about what you're doing there? Some events mm-hmm. just call for song. It's just That's so right. It's, it's, uh, it's in our DNA, I yeah. guess. And, some, and like Jay says, some songs will evoke a memory, a person. Uh, there's a song we sing sometimes called Complete. And every time we sing it, I think of Gary Myers, a guy who's, who's gone on to be with the Lord, who died of cancer. But it was just a very passionate worship leader. For many years at, yeah. at our church, and that song just I think of him every single time. It always brings a tear yeah. to my eye yeah. because I just the passion of him. Right. And of course, it's all about Christ, but that's who he loved, you know. So mm-hmm. it is. It is amazing. You're right, yeah. just that songs can evoke that, you know. And the other side of that now <clears throat> is, you know, one of my favorite verses is Psalm 98: "Sing to the Lord a new song, for He has done marvelous things." So I. I love all the old songs, and I think there's something about the old songs that evoke that emotion. You know, I can tell you, if I hear a Dave Matthews Band song, I can picture myself driving an old car with my little disc man with the anti-shock, you know, <laughs> and plugged into the cigarette lighter. You know, you, you can just you, yeah. you, you bring, well, bring you back to a time. to remember cigarette. I, I remember the cigarette lighter. Yeah, I, I listened to That's the right. Eagles on the way over here, <laughs> yeah. and uh, there, there you go, there you go. And he was Hotel California, and I said, "Who in the world would not like that?" <laughs> <laughs> At any time, right? That's, right. That's, That's just a borderline top. satanic. Yep. Song. Well, it is, <laughs> but it is. But it's, a, it's got a good beat. It's got a good beat. <laughs> it is. And by the way, Dad, it's in the top five of all time rock yeah. songs. Really? Yeah, I just heard the whole well, list. I heard it while ago. It was funny. It was funny. Yesterday, I was texting Mac Powell, who is, I guess he'd been doing contemporary music for the longest, and was the first kind of band I listened to because mm-hmm. Missy was trying to get me involved for years. I mean, and I had the same moment you had probably three years ago. I mean, once I got into it, oh, I'm in. Yeah. 
but she's like, I think you'll like this guy because it, he he has a style, kind of a rock style that you mm. listen to. Because I love Leonard Skinner and Credence Clearwater Revival, and that's what Phil used to play in the Duck Call Shop to keep us, you know, working when we were kids. But so later on, I get to meet Mac Powell, and he's like, he he was coming to Monroe. That's why I was <clears throat> talking to him about yesterday because he's coming again in like a week. And uh, so he's like, why don't you get up on stage with us and, and play with us? I was like, well, I can't. I was like, you need to get my wife up there. I, we could get I a harp. Can't, yeah, I Let's can't. Get a harp. I said, no, nah, I could yeah. do a duck call. Something yeah. funny. And he's like, no, no. He's like, they'll never know. And so he said, we'll just get you a guitar, and we just won't plug it they in. plug it in. And so I was like, okay, let's do it. So we get up there, and he says, uh, what do you want to play? So I just throw out uh some Leonard Skinner and you know, people thought this was playing. They crank up. They call me the breeze, <laughs> which is one of their all time yeah, yeah, best. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, of course I'm playing the guitar yeah. and look, I've had through the years, I would say at least a hundred people come up and say, what you, you could really, I just was shocked. You could play a guitar. <laughs> Didn't know you had it in you. I was like, you know, so just the gifts, you know, that God has bestowed on me are hard to explain. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> it's a funny moment. So there's pictures floating around out there about me in concert playing the breeze. Yeah, I, breeze. I never heard that story, Jason. Yeah, pretty good story. Yeah, it happened. Willie got so, on stage just recently, I guess the year before the pandemic, I guess it was 19, with the Foreigner because he has, they're a big part of his story, Jukebox Hero, you know, it's how he used yeah. to make money on the school bus and uh, because he was the human jukebox and he put a quarter under his arm and he'd drop it in his hand and then he did all of his, he <laughs> sing the song so so he's always we and they got it from me because I liked Foreigner, so yeah. you know, your brother's here with your older brother plays so he got an opportunity. I guess they knew that, but they pulled him up on stage. I will say that wow, some so, people geez. take it in a negative light because I was baptizing this girl down in the river, and there was a pretty good little crowd that gathered up on the riverbank, and a couple of bass fishermen were coming up to buy you. They were bass fishing. So they just kind of ran into what they just come around the curve, and all of a sudden it broke out in song when I baptized this girl. Yeah. And I turned around and looked. And, and I, I saw them. They was like standing up in their boat with their rods and reels, you know. I said, hey, y'all want in on this action? I've never seen two people leave so fast. <laughs> <laughs> they left the premises. <laughs> I guess they were. It was kind of like a singing out of Old Brother Where Art Thou, you know, down in the baptism, you know, and the guy, they thought, I said, y'all want in on some of this action? Boy, did they get out of there. <laughs> Woo. A lot scarier is an ex drunk with a Bible in his hand than if he had a real weapon. Oh, yeah, that's scary. It's scarier if, if yeah. an ex drunk got that's a right. Bible hollering about Jesus. That's scary. Okay. That's scary a lot. So let's take another break. So, Ryan, I want to shift gears a little bit <clears throat> and talk about because um, you're the director of our One Kingdom ministry. Which how, how long have you been doing that? Because you used to be a, like a stock guy. Yeah, yeah, I won't even get into that. Because yeah, Jackson, yeah, we don't need to talk. Stock guy? Yeah, he yeah. worked for Merrill. He I worked for Merrill Lynch for eight years. Oh, I'm sorry to hear oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> no, <I'm kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't want to yeah. start that. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll go down a, a rabbit hole there. But uh, no, yeah. in 2016, okay. um, I, I felt the call, and, and I, a lot of you guys know my story. But I, 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 I fought it for many years. Yep. You know, I was asked to um, be the youth minister for. Uh, I, you know, symbolically, I turned it down three times, Jace. And, um, huh. but, but there was a seed just planted in me that, that, you know, everything I was doing, it was already, uh, it was already ministry. And you and your wife, Miranda worked with our college kids with right. some other Which, volunteers. Yep. In a weird set of circumstances that we talked about in the, in the party, do you want to tell, uh, like, you know, uh, or share with, I'm part of the process oh, yeah. that oh, yeah. led you to your wife. Oh, yeah. So uh, Jace baptized my wife yep. when, when she was in youth group. Yeah. So she was, uh, I, it was at a camp. Was you it, know, it's, I'm, I have trouble you, going yeah. back <laughs> over a two week period. Right, right, right. Yeah. Let me, and, don't, it, and, yeah, don't ask him yeah, anything. I, I, as soon yesterday. as I said it, I knew it. I was like, no, he doesn't know. <laughs> no, he doesn't know. But I met her cause I used to teach the junior high and, yeah. uh, cause I had, I had a burr in my saddle because nobody wanted to do that. And then I went and taught it for the first time and realized why nobody wanted to do this. Cause <laughs> right. it's such an awkward age yeah. 
And then I took it as a challenge. I thought, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna try to reach these people. Yep. And she was on one of the first classes that yep. I did. But I told you, and I wasn't kidding when we were talking about the other night. She was there was always a couple in each class that I would think to myself, now this person is going places, even at a you know junior high age. Yeah. And she was one of those people. I mean, I, I loved everything about her. I said, she's got a heart of gold. Yeah, so I can't blame you. That's why when I, I heard, I don't know if you know this, but when I heard y'all were getting married, I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Because <laughs> I, I had never met you. Right, right, right. <laughs> and I said, uh, babe, get her parents on the phone because we need to have a talk. And I had a conversation with them. <laughs> with my uh, in-laws? Yeah, about you. I don't you. know the story. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Uh, and they were... They assured me. You were me. being vetted without without your knowledge, <laughs> well, right? <laughs> it's like I hadn't even seen her in years, but I was yeah. like, no, wait a minute. Getting yeah. married? I don't even know this guy. What which, are we doing? which is kind of ironic because we've said on this podcast before, all, every Roberts and male was rejected by their in-laws <laughs> yeah. on the initial That's, run to get married. So right. it's kind of ironic that yeah. Jason didn't even know you. And oh, he's well, having these I mean, I, so I had the same deal on the opposite side of that, Jace, because I, I come to visit White's Ferry Road as Miranda's boyfriend or fiance. I don't remember the timeline. Yeah. And, you know, we take responses at the end. We have our family time and, and here comes Phil walking down. And I was like, Oh, oh man, boy. this poor guy, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like <laughs> he's coming down to, to, you know, lay his heart out. And then he's just standing there. He's and, probably and, drunk. Yeah. 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 And I said, I look at Miranda. I was like, what's this guy's story? She's like, that's Phil. He's one of our elders. I was like, Oh, Oh, okay. <laughs> and, she's like, and then she points at Jace and she's like, yeah, that's his son. He baptized me. I was like, Huh? You know what? what's going on? Who's this this guy? Kind of yeah. cult, I right, right, right. I'm looking around like head on a swivel. So yeah, where 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 the rednecks and the stock market meet? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's it. A that's a great it. way. There's to, the title there's of this podcast church, right here. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Really, I was checking you out, and you were like, "Oh my goodness, we're going to have to go through some skeletons in the closet." No doubt. Yeah. More. Like the girl asked me a couple of weeks ago, "Is there? Where's the preacher around here?" They've never been there before. They said, we think we got the wrong church. Where's the preacher? Well, they asked me, and I said, oh, he's around here somewhere. They said, who are you? I said, Jim Smith. They <laughs> said, Jim. <laughs> the story. Every time I hear it, I'm like, it struck me. Why because not just both say them, Phil? I'm Phil. I'm the <laughs> Why well, Jim Smith. <laughs> it just struck me. I was having a little fun with them, but you say, what happened? They both were converted to Christ. When they, when they, even though the unfolded, even though their first thing that happened, they had a lie. They got to, lied to. Yeah, on the I first, guess first there is. A, I didn't lie to him. They said, "Where's the preacher?" I said, "He's around there somewhere." <laughs> Jim Smith <laughs> is a lie. Old Jim yeah. Smitty. No, I just threw that in because you know. And then they were surprised. Old Jim gets up. Well, good night. There's the preacher. They told me about it later. They said, oh. "Why did you tell us that?" I said, "Well, I just spun it around with you, girl." They said, "Well, thank you for that message because we get eternal life here today." Oh, so man. they both Praise obeyed God. the gospel. No, this is one of Phil's stories that's like Sai. You know, Sai has about twelve stories, <laughs> right. mm-hmm. but no matter when you hear them, they're always good. Still gold. Always good. Yeah, yeah. Hey, this yeah. one. It's always good. That's right. So, so you are the director of One Kingdom. Uh, I'm to rent, keep us back, hurt us back. Well, tell us about the name because a lot of people think, "What does that mean?" One yeah, Kingdom. yeah. And well, it, yeah, because the ministry has been around almost as long as our church has been. That's right. Yeah. And it's not, you guys have kind of rebranded, so it's, right, been, so it's been around for two thousand years, huh? Well, well that's true. <laughs> that's true. That's true. It's <laughs> planned <laughs> before that. That's right. You got it. So the ministry was actually started over uh, over sixty years ago, and it was called World Radio, and it's still World Radio, still one of our main uh, uh, projects. But the goal was to get the gospel out to every nation, every language. Yep. The, and and the, what they found was they started off, um, you know, with the, I think we bought a radio station in South America somewhere. Of course, that was taken over by the government. So <laughs> I said, okay, well, let's try to do it a different way. <laughs> right. uh, but th- then we started buying airtime for. Uh, leaders that God had raised up in their respective countries. And that has evolved into so many things. Now now it's it's one kingdom, and, and our goal is to empower and equip local leaders to share the gospel in every nation and every language. Yeah. How many nations are you in? Almost 70 now. Whoa, wow. Almost 70. We're about Man. 60. Which is basically a third of the world. I That's thought right. you were going to yeah. say seven. Yeah. <laughs> 70. 70. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and we give to y'all, uh, Miss Kay and I, you know, we've been in mm-hmm. the, uh, supporters of it for a long time it's, it's really more we, we, we i have, remember when it first started yep oh yeah we we have a, a particular love mom and dad and lisa and i for a project in liberia yes that to yeah. me kind of encapsulates everything you got it tells I mean, the story really yeah, well yeah. yeah so in in monrovia liberia of course we have our friend there isaac day 
which yeah. I want to just stop here for a second and ask all of the listeners of Unashamed to pray for Isaac. Yeah. Isaac's yeah. a partner of ours, but he's been dealing with some health issues. Um, he's my second favorite Isaac, I always say, because my firstborn son's named Isaac. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, he's uh, he's a man after God's heart, and uh, uh, I, yeah. no, you no met doubt, him. I think we all know him. Yeah, and, and yeah. I've been uh, where in both in Gambia, Gambia right? and also also Liberia, probably four or five times. I've traveled yeah. over there and uh, to do things with him. He's a tremendous, you know, son of God. He just, he's the one that finds other reliable men that's right. who can teach that's others. Right. That's he's, right. He's, I remember the first time I heard him preach and. Missy wasn't with me when I got home. I said, "You know what? I didn't understand everything he said, but I loved it. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. of the accent. He has a strong. Yeah, yeah. he does have a strong accent. You know? Yeah. And then when I talked to him, he could understand nothing I said because he was like, "Because you kind? too have a strong accent." He said, "What kind of English is this?" I took that yeah. as a bad sign. He said, "Bad. What bad. kind of English is this?" <laughs> yeah, Al tells a story about being with him when they they looked up and some guy with smoke coming out of it. Al said he never figured out where the smoke was coming from, but some guy with all the dressed up hair like this, and I mean, and he was basically tell that story. He was, uh, was it Mac? He Owen? was a shaman. <laughs> yeah. <let's laughs> and, and what Isaac said about him. Yeah, let's take another break. Yeah, we were, it was uh, in the Gambia, and apparently he was some kind of shaman. Yeah. He had what looked like a ghillie suit on. <laughs> What's a shaman? Huh? Like some kind of tribal oh, uh, juju tribal man, lead. medicine right, right. man. Oh, yeah. oh, like a voodoo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he he comes down the street. I hear all this banging around, and it was like, I, I walk outside, you know, and I'm just looking around. And so I could hear him coming down the street. And, it was, and the church is there. Well, we were at Isaac's house. Yeah. But he's walking down the street. And so I, I see people going out, and they're giving him money. And, and so I'm watching this, you know, and I'm intrigued, you know, because you're in another country. But it was kind of scary because he had this smoke it's coming out from somewhere, and he's got this suit on, and you can't see his, you know, just his eyes. Right, right. And it's kind of spooky looking. So so Fatu runs out, Isaac's wife, and she's, oh, get back in the house, Pastor Allen. You don't want to be out here with this guy. And I said, well, what's, what are they doing? She said, well, they, they give him money so he won't curse, put curses on you. She said, but you well, don't want, you don't what want a, to. What a job that yeah. is. And yeah, she was yeah. like, but you don't want to look him in the eyes. <laughs> it's like, okay. It's like, what do you do for a living? Yeah, yeah. Uh, don't put curses on people. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>, right. <laughs> you know, I make that check Basically, out this was demonic. Right. It was demonic. Yeah. And, but it was, I guess, mm -hmm. that they were, you know, the people believed in it. The people yeah. that were out there giving money to Isaac yeah. basically said, what did he oh, say? They, don't don't worry about yeah, it. He said, "Don't don't even yeah, yeah don't even mess." You with don't it. want to get cursed by those guys either because they have to have that come true, right? So if they're like, "Hey, I'm putting a, a curse for you to die," well, they're gonna figure out a way to kill you because <laughs> yeah, exactly. they got to be right, you know, oh, for, for the legend to go on. So it's all making sense yeah. now. Yes, yeah, yep. and I've seen that in other places. We've been to Haiti yep. before. Haiti's big on the, and, and you can feel it's a palpable evil uh -huh. when you go around it's these attention. voodoo houses and places. It's a it's the real deal. And, right. you know, we've talked about it before on the podcast, but I've seen a lot with Isaac especially that, you know, you'll see a lot more crazy things if people are willing to believe it. Yeah, My theory has always been you don't see as much in the U.S. in terms of demonic stuff because they don't tend to believe it. You know, they just, uh, you know, they everybody's got a script for it. It's a mental illness. It's this, it's yeah. that. But you go to the third world, you see some and hear about yeah. some crazy yeah. things. It's like wow. a different way to have a mafia. That's right, because right. they're basically offering you protection. Right, and in, in Liberia they call it the secret society. That's right. that's it's very much like that. So I mean, there's yeah. a name for it. Mm -hmm. Man, so, so tell them a little bit about yeah. the uh, the school, the guru, right. and all that in our so last few minutes. One of our philosophies at One Kingdom is is that we believe that God has raised up leaders all over the world. You know, the the old way. I say the old way. It's still effective, but we don't necessarily send American missionaries to go live right. anywhere or spend long term missions. Uh, because we believe God is is working already in in those locations, and yeah. and so we try to come in s support of the visions that God has laid on these men's heart. Right. So Isaac is one of those, he, and and he had a vision years back to start a preaching school that also taught uh, men and women agriculture, because at at the end of the day, you can teach a man to preach, but in those countries, it's hard for them to support themselves. So then they're calling back to the United States, hey, I need support, I need support. Well, Isaac had the idea to say, let's teach them the Bible, let's teach them how to spread the gospel. But let's also teach them how to farm so they can support their ministry themselves and they're not dependent 
on U.S. support. Seems simplistic, but it's it yeah, works. It. Yes, and it's yeah. also a great helping. idea. And, and it's amen. also helping rebuild a war torn country. That's right. Because you, yep. you're now you're getting some you know entrepreneurship, right. You know, and you're instilling it through spiritual people, which yeah, is amazing. That's right. So they have the Restoration Bible and Agriculture Institute, mm -hmm. which they've graduated now. They're they're working on their third class. So you and I've been to both of the graduations yep. of the first two, which is, I you know, hopefully we'll get down there for the third. Yeah. We hadn't talked about that yet, but I'm gonna put you on the spot here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he, he, so they're teaching men to preach. They're teaching men to farm. They've also started this gari facility. So to, to tell you a little bit about gari, gari is uh, it's like a starch. It's uh, it comes from uh, like a potato like substance, it's like a root, yeah. cassava. So if you know cassava, it's a it looks like a potato, but they they mash it up into what they call gari, and it's used in every meal. It's it's uh, just behind you know rice. It's the second most popular. Uh, uh, food in Liberia. Well, they don't produce any gari in Liberia. They they import it all from Nigeria. So Isaac said, look, look we got to start that now. We're going to start our own producing our, our own gari. We'll have our preachers that are learning. They'll farm cassava, feed the gari facility. That money will go back in to support. So it's a self-sustaining environment. Yep. And you know, one of our goals, it sounds counterintuitive, is for us to not be supporting this mission anymore. Right. Because yeah. they, you know, God has given you everything that you need around you mm -hmm. to not only survive, but to flourish. That's right. You know, and, and I think prosperity is a word that we, we confuse sometimes with riches. Yeah. Yeah. Prosperity is just living full in the gospel and, and knowing that God's given you everything you need to survive. Yeah. And that's what Isaac's trying to teach these young men and women. They've also started a skills training center for women. Yeah. Um, so you know, a lot of these women, um, you know, just like here, the, the man, the husband is not involved. Or they've 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 taken off, or they've they're alcoholics, or what you know, and some of them have turned to prostitution, or just really tough tough lives. Yeah. And Isaac has given them Isaac has given them an avenue to learn tailoring and sewing, and and to start their own business so they can support their families. It's really a work that we're yeah. we're really highly invested into. And his uh, Isaac's wife and daughter have been a big part of that, and yeah. also his wife has started. We call it the Day Mart. I think it I says Daymart on it. I know. I think yeah, I jokingly you, you said it, yeah. it and coined it, yeah. and then now it's on their sign, Daymart, mm -hmm. like Walmart. But it, she runs the whole business, and so yeah. I just, when I look at Fatu, who's a wonderful person, I think about Proverbs thirty-one. You know, that's she's her. She's a P thirty-one she, woman. She, she's that woman, yeah. and so these are wonderful people. And you know, I was, and we don't have much time left, but I was thinking about Jess. You mentioned Karina earlier. That came about because of One Kingdom, because yeah. of one yeah. of our ambassadors that's who's right. in Nicaragua. Yep needed some place for her to be for a period of time. And that connection was made for you guys. And now we have a, a daughter. I mean, I have a new yeah. niece out of that situation, but that came about because of, of a stable yeah. because of a statement. Yeah. That's right. And he had, he had kind of offered uh, to mentor her cause she was basically an orphan. You mm -hmm. know, she had one sister and, uh, and just let her in a way of, you know, you learn, educate yourself, internet, keep yourself out of trouble. You know, but overall, you put your faith and trust in in Jesus Christ because right. He has a plan for you. And uh, boy, I'm telling you, one of the most impressive people that's ever that I've ever been around. I, I love mean, Karina. Oh, she's she's amazing. So, so Matthew 28, yep. 18 through 20 was always the guiding force for radio and now for the entire ministry. Cause you That's guys right. do relief work too. Yep. We had a couple of guys on that are doing these uh, series a video series about work being done in Lake Charles. Mm -hmm. And then right along that time on one of the week, yeah, the one kingdom Sunday, a couple of weeks back yeah. and you guys did a tremendous video about a family that we helped and you guys rebuilt it. I mean, I just wept through the whole thing. It's, yeah. That's where we got yeah. the idea to have you on. Yeah. I, I was watching that too. I thought, Oh boy, I was this a mess now. <laughs> Cause you got, I, I came up and spoke and I'd seen that video probably a dozen times. And I walk up to the stage and I was just overwhelmed because she's sitting there in the audience, Yeah, you know, and, and for those that don't know the story, we, uh, we partnered um, uh, with a, with an online boutique that they do a uh, a give back weekends. Carly Jean Los Angeles, I'll give yep. them a plug here. They they do great. You know, they, it's a it's a women's boutique. They're based out of Los Angeles. They do a give back weekend where they raise uh, money for a, a charitable cause, and they wanted to partner with us with One One Kingdom for relief work. And uh, we were able to rebuild uh, this woman's house. I mean, and not just the roof, not just the walls, the floors. That's what she thought was being done. But we, they raised enough money that we were able to completely remodel their home, new furniture, uh, it was, appliances. It was a beautiful home. 
Yeah. And, and was, you know, and she was just so moved. And then she was there that day and we had lunch afterwards. Yeah. And it was a very, it was a wonderful day, which by the way, the audience, if you go to WFRchurch.org, look in our archives, it was about three weeks ago, but yep. you'll see One Kingdom. This yep. So tell folks in our last bit here how they can, if they want to help out One Kingdom, yeah. they do. Yeah, go to onekingdom.org and there's a ways to help bar on their upper right hand corner. And, uh, you know, the best way that you can help is a, a monthly donation, even if it's five dollars, ten dollars, twenty five, whatever that is. That continual support goes a long way to giving us uh, to, to helping us map out where we're going to send support. And for all those guys that we're partnering with, it gives them that confidence to know that they've, they've got a long term you know, support. So go to onekingdom.org. Uh, you can also buy. I've got. I'm wearing some gear today. I, I brought you guys some gear later. Oh yeah. Uh, you can you can you can rep us wherever you're going, but it also that goes to support our ministry as well. Yeah, I saw one of your right hand hand man uh, yesterday in the grocery store. I turned around. And I saw a shirt, and I thought, "Well, I need one of those shirts." And I read it. It said, "Rub some dirt on it." <laughs> and I looked up, and it was Robert. It's Robert, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. large one kid. I said, yeah. "Where did you get that shirt?" And he said, "Ryan Lee made it for me." Yeah. I was like, "He's going to be on our show yeah. tomorrow." He was like, he, like "You know, if small... you don't know Robert, he just turned 70. So he what bench is it? presses 250. I'm, I'm, I'm ignorant of what you're talking about. What does it mean? <laughs> Rub yeah. some dirt Rub on some it. Dirt. I didn't know, but I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think it meant like when you, if you're griping or complaining, exactly. or, oh, here's the I'm, author of the shirt. What? Well, he, so Robert, he, he just turned seven years old. He still bench presses two fifty. You know, he's just a man's man. And uh, you know, if anybody's griping or complaining, or you yeah. know, I'm not feeling well, his his phrase, he always says, "Hey, just rub some dirt on it." You know, <laughs> yeah. in other words, get over it. Get over it. Yeah. You know, we got, I, there's work to be done. Yeah. You know, and I, I like you. that about him. Because I, I was you. telling him about our ailments. I said, "Me and Phil," and he's like. <laughs> rub, rub some dirt on it. Yeah, I'll all remember right. that. But rub a little dirt on it, man. You'll be all right. Yeah, it's good That's to right. have you, Ryan. Thanks yeah, for thank you for out. having me. Absolutely. Appreciate it. We'll do it again. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed Podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube. And be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, Subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.